In this video, I'm going to show you how to use SQLite in Talent. SQLite is a lightweight database engine that allows us to do things, to create things like embedded databases. It's pretty simple to do that because you actually just have to create a file with a specific extension like SQLite or .db in order to be able to use that. If you want to use that, go to sqlite.org or if you want to learn more. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to use SQLite in a talent specifically. Uh, we need two things for this. We need the connection string, which is like the one here shown on the left side, and then the corresponding components that allow us to work with SQLite in a talent. So we will go for the demo. I will show you what we're going to do here. We're going to build in this job. First of all, we connect to the database and then connect it to a post job. We disconnect again from the database. And then the actual process is here writing some data, some customer data and generated by the road generator to the database. And if everything goes fine, again, reading in this data in talent. So this is what we're going to build. For this, we need a database. We start off with an empty database which is this touch talent.db comment here. So just in one of my folders on my uh, computer, I create this empty database file. And now I can use SQLite 3 uh, to access this file by uh, putting here dot open and then the uh, file name talent.db. And here we can now say dot, uh, sorry, dot tables to see if it has any content it does not have. And we will come back here in a few minutes to verify on the result. So in Talent, uh, we're first of all going to create a new database connection. So right click, create a connection, for example, called SQLite, go to next, uh, select the corresponding database type, and then here browse for the file that you're going to use where you're, going, where you're having your um, SQLite file. Okay, you can see here it's already indicating in my case because it's one that already has data that is the SQLite 3 and database. The other one is still empty. You can see here it has zero bytes, uh, but as the one I want to use, I select this. And now if you click on connection, if you're doing this for the first time, it may prompt you to download an additional driver to be able to use SQLite, which should be pretty easy to click process. In my case, it directly shows that connection is successful. I can hit OK and finish. Now we want to recreate this process here. I'm going to copy the name just to make it easier for me and create a new job design here. Right click on job designs and add it to at the end to have a new job name. Now I want to connect to the database first, pre-job, and then at the end, a disconnect from the database. Also add a post and job component as well. And for the connection, I'm going to drag and drop my database connection into my job and convert it to SQLite connection component. And so that this is executed before anything else, I connect the trigger on component OK to this DB connection component. Now for the SQLite close component, I just left click somewhere here in the designer and I search for this SQLite C and there it is, hit return and it's inserted. And here we have to decide which connection to close and select the corresponding one, which is the only one here in my job. And again, here also trigger on component OK is and the connection from post job to DB close in order to make sure that we recently closed the connection after everything else in our process has finished. Now for the data that we're going to generate, I'm going to make life easy for me. I'm going to copy this zero generator and look at this uh, together with you. Uh, also in order not to bore you with the definition, uh, me typing and the definition, the schema and so on. So here, if I click on row generator editor, you can see what I have here. It's uh, four columns that are ID, first name, last name, birth and date that use existing functions here from talent, which is numeric sequence, talent data generator, get first name and get last name, and then talent date, get random date within these uh, parameters and that you can see here. 
Okay, for the last one, for the country, it should be a bit more interesting. I use this empty function, you could say, but this means uh, from the list that I provided here, it would pick randomly for each row one of these values. How to provide them? Well, you get to down here to this value field, click on this three dot button, and you can provide a list like this. For example, I uh, chose here to use some ISO 3 uh, country codes uh, for different countries. And now I can uh, change this number of rows. I don't need a lot of data here. 10 is okay. And then hit okay in my process. So we'll have an idea of what the data will be generated. We first add a log row component and we will again execute this job F6 on your keyboard. And here we have an idea of what data would be generated. This is fine. So I can delete this logo component again and now add a tmap. And the tmap receives this row generator input with row main input. And now I double click on tmap to create a new output here on the top right side with the default name and take all the columns from the input to the output. And a slight transformation, a small transformation is what I'm going to do for the birth date, it comes in as a date and should be output as a string because SQLite would work like this with a dates usually, okay, or in integer format, but not stored as a date itself. So how to do that, how to convert, how to form it and convert it to string. Well, now for the row one birth date here, I click on this three dot button and in talent, it there is a talent date a format a date function available already uh, out of the box that I can use. So just have to uh, put this one here instead of my date. And for uh, this purpose, I don't uh, need the time portion uh, of uh, this uh, format that I provide. Okay, so I go with this one. And the last small thing here that I do at the end, I add a dot to string. Uh, so this is converted uh, converting the date to this specific format and at the end making a string out of it. Okay, so this is fine and should be good to go. And I can confirm this by clicking OK here. And I can again add a logo component just to verify before I try to write to the database. And sorry, I don't want to create a new output. I right click on Tmap and select this out one here, connect it there. there. And it looks good. So again, uh, no, not again execute. I can delete now this logo and take my database connection here from the metadata, drag and drop that into my job. In this case, I want to write to uh, SQLite database. So I select SQLite output component and hit OK. And again here now row out one should be connected uh, to uh, this uh, component. For this component, we can first of all say use an existing connection, which is DB connection one in my case, give it a name for the table customer. And if you want to rerun this example several times without changing anything, it makes sense to select drop table if exists and create. Okay, that's pretty close. Now we use the commit and rollback components. So I look for this one, SQLite C, which the, gives me the, no, not the close component, SQLite uh, commit and the SQLite uh, R for rollback, uh, which is the one, two ones that I want to use. Okay, this first sub job here should be all fine for me to do the commit. So I select here on the row generator, which is the subjob start component, the trigger on subjob OK, and connect it to this DB commit component. Here I can select the connection and not close the connection explicitly here because I'm going to do that up there. And similarly, only with the trigger on subjob error, I'm doing it for DB rollback. Okay, so also select a connection besides uh, connecting this trigger and uh, unchecking in this box uh, close uh, connection. All right, and with this, we're ready to go to insert the data into our database. So I hit the run button in my job. It looks all fine. Also, if I move that around here, you can see an okay 
as a runtime information appears here on uh, this subjob OK um, trigger. And we can now verify here we have a table and it's a small data set with a few columns. So it's okay to do something like this and we will see the corresponding data. Now, if in Talent we want to read again from a SQLite table, we can use the SQLite input component, but we don't have to configure that manually because the schema is now already present in the database. So I can right click on my database connection, select retrieve schema, and go to next, check my desired table here, go to next and to finish. And now this table, I just drag and drop into my process, convert it to DB input component, and add a, a log row component to this. Switch this to table mode and connect the two components with a row main connection. And now I don't want to write again to the database. So all this here I can deactivate either by selecting it all and deactivate or just on the row generator, right click and select deactivate whole subshop. So everything connected to this in some form would get deactivated. So that's fine. With this, I can read the data also in Talent again from the database. Here we can already see the output and it should be the same as we see here on the console, just slightly different uh, formatted, uh, but besides this, it's fine. All right, that's my SQLite example that I wanted to show you. Uh, if you liked it and you want to learn more, I have a comprehensive course on talent data integration, ETL, big data, and many other topics. You can find it on bit.ly slash talent data. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.